Hola, como estas? We're going bilingual today. Uh, hopefully that expands the audience. Hey, what's going on guys? Brandon here with Texas Plinking with a little bit of a different kind of video. Um, I'm gonna sound like a spoiled brat when I say that I have never had this many unfired guns at one given time. Typically, right when I pick something up from the FFL, I'm pretty eager and I'll get my first impressions within a few days uh, of that. I've been out of town and it kind of just uh, pulled together to where everything on this table, minus one, uh, I have not shot once. With that being said, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven guns to go through. So we're gonna kind of snap it together. No in-depth stuff, just have fun with seven guns. So that sounds good with you guys. We'll go ahead and get into it. Now, real quick, before we do, I wanna give a big thanks to two sponsors that helped make this video happen. The first sponsor being XS Sights. XS Sights is known for making the fastest sights in any light. Whether used for personal defense or hunting, these sights are designed and built to be the absolute best for their purpose. Check out some of their offerings, such as the DXT2 Big Dot Night Sights, R3D Night Sights, and the F8 Night Sights. XS Sights are American made and Texas proud. I'll put a link in the description so you guys can check out some of their other offerings. And you could use the code XS Sights 10 for 10% off your purchase. So big thanks to them for sponsoring this video. And lastly, I want to thank Gunspot. Gunspot is an online listing and auction site for both new and used firearms, accessories, and more. Buyers can get great deals and never pay out-of-state tax or any hidden fees. They also have Gunspot Academy, which gives the 2A community a blog space to view 2A content. I thought I'd mention that Gunspot is currently giving away a Pit Viper from the John Wick 4 movie. The winner will be announced on Gunspot's YouTube channel at 6.30 p.m. June 5th, 2023. Again, big thanks to Gunspot for sponsoring this video as well. Check them out for all your firearm and firearm accessory needs for buying and selling. However, I don't know why you'd want to ever sell any of those items. They are for collecting and hoarding, as I've done here. So, like I said, haven't shot these yet, minus the 5.56 AK, a little spoiler for you. Rather than going through them all right now, let's just go through them as we shoot them. We'll start off with this guy. This looks familiar because it is a Springfield Armory 1911 operator. And the new thing with it is it's nine millimeter. They used to have the nine millimeter operator. I still have some of the older ones at home, but they just brought it back. I don't know why it ever went away. I think they're just kind of cleaning up the 1911 lineup. So it looks familiar because I have a 45 ACP version of this, but nine mil. Huh. This is the XTAR EP9. It is a very budget oriented, little PDW type thing. It takes Glock mags, AR controls, but in nine mil, very interesting. Got a little right on uh, red dot sight on there. First impressions through it. I don't really know if it's uh, worth trying to shoot a hundred yards. I haven't sighted this thing in. Wow, that's actually really surprisingly soft. Did it cycle? That's interesting. I mean, I thought it was just a normal direct blowback nine mil. Everyone tries to do their own thing. So there's roller delayed, there's uh, radially delayed, and then there's direct blowback, which is usually really snappy for nine mil. This thing almost seems like it takes three times as long to cycle. And for that, it's really soft shooting. That's interesting. All right, I can't tell where the bullet's going. It's not sighted in. And it's crazy lightweight too. Like you could do this all day. Pretty neat. That is the weirdest recoil impulse. That is so interesting. Much softer than I expected. All right, it does have last round hold open. It just didn't do it on that one. Here's an interesting one, BCA or Bear Creek Arsenal. This is a 22 AR, but not 22 long rifle. That is 22 Magnum. Kind of interesting. Uh, mag only holds 10 rounds. So let's go ahead and see what that's all about. Uh, okay, we hit something. Side charging on the right and the right only, so a little AK operator reload there. Uh, this is a Palmetto State AK. Now they have a whole line of AKs. This is the GF3. Uh, and it's kind of cool. You know, I like classic looking AKs, I like modernized AKs. It is classic in the sense that it still is a 7.62x39, as most people know AKs to be. Uh, but modernized in that, here we go with the polymer, you know, PMAG from Magpul, M-Lock throughout. Midwest folding stock, very, very cool. And I got a uh, North Tech uh, red dot on there as well. Yeah, it's pretty concussive. Doesn't move too, too much though. Very nice. Palmetto State Armory, another AK. 
I forgot the exact name. I think it's the 556 AK or AK 556 AR, who knows, something like that. But it is an AK that takes AR mags. And with that, of course, it shoots the 556 as well. So you can see the mag wheel is quite a bit different, but we do have a P mag for an AR. And well, surprise, surprise, there we go. I put a OSS or now Huxworks muzzle device on here with a flow through suppressor. Yeah, okay, I got some hits there. Here's what I'll do. Take the mag out. All right, so we're clear. And it's got last round bolt hold open that you can do right here. Locks it back. So we're clear. Let's go ahead and throw this guy on there. That is so sweet. Tell you what, as much as I want to keep on shooting it, I might make that brief because that's justified. I think I'm gonna make a full in-depth video on this. If not later this month, very early next month. So look out in June. Stay tuned, but it is an AK and 5.56 that takes AR mags. Kind of cool. This is a Bergara Premier Divide N65 Creedmoor. Um, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna make a full on video with this thing. So I'll keep the information kind of surface level. All you need to know is it's Bergara's own carbon fiber barrel and the AG Composites carbon fiber stock. This is a Vortex Razor LHT. This is a, what is it? Four and a half to 22 by 50. Very light scope. And it's the first focal plane with a great informative reticle, which just matches this kind of rifle perfectly in that it can be a hunting rifle certainly because it's so light, but it's mag fed with an AICS compatible um, pattern. And so with that said, you could go ahead and put five, 10 rounds through it and kind of make it a bench rest rifle, even though it's so light. So between the optic and the rifle, kind of a cool hybrid setup. I have not shot it yet. Uh, usually I don't show the sight in process, but at the same time, I like showing first impressions. So let's see, um, this is gonna be some Hornady 140 grain ELD match factory ammo. This should be good on steel anyway. Good enough to knock the steel down. So let's just go ahead and move over to the paper. Oh, damn. That thing's like three quarters of an inch to the right. So three rounds to get a decent zero. Let's go ahead and dial it in even more. That looks pretty good. Looks very good. Opened up just a little bit, not too bad at all though. We'll wrap that up uh, at the end. Let's just move over to the next rifle. Let's start with the core of it. It is a Howa model 1500 and 65 Creedmoor. And this is one of those cool deals that you could pick up from Brownells. It's one of those barreled action trigger combos. And take a look at the barrel. It's actually a, I believe this is 24 inch carbon fiber barrel. So we're going from one carbon gun to the next. So there you go. You get that from Brownells and it was not totally expensive for what it is. It was under right around $700, either high sixes, low sevens, something like that. Definitely under a grand barrel action trigger, all that good stuff with the carbon barrel. Then you plop that into whatever stocker chassis you want. Uh, we went ahead and put that into an MDT ESS. This here is a Vortex Razor HD Gen 3. It is a 6 to 36 by 56. And then I've got my uh, Hooksworks. This is a uh, uh, titanium 762 uh, suppressor. Uh, and a lot of people ask me why use a flow through suppressor on bolt guns. There's really no advantage other than the fact I just happen to have muzzle brakes for them. And I like the way that they taper up and mount. Uh, there's no rattling like with the AAC teeth system that I've had before, or I still have. So it's more, mostly just because it mounts up so well. No other reason why I'm using a flow through suppressor. That one sink a little low there. All right, so here's the target. Let's go ahead and start with the Bergara. I did three rounds and that's those right there. And these are one inch squares and it's certainly within that. Looks like maybe about just over between half to three quarters, we'll call it. Yeah, it's definitely quite a bit under three quarters actually, huh? So anyway, under three quarters for just three rounds. I know it's not crazy sexy, but then again, we're not making a full review on it just yet. Might save that for next month. So pretty nice, there's the three rounds. This one, uh, for some reason, I was chasing my tail a little bit more trying to get a zero. So ignore this, this was just kind of me getting the zero. I was happy with this. Went straight into three round group. This was shot number one. 
then two, three. So it kind of strung out quite a bit there. Hey guys, real quick cut from the video. Uh, just got home, so shooting a little out of order. Uh, the Howa 1500 was performing okay, like I said about a MOA there, but it could have done a lot better and I found out why. I heard it making some noise as I was moving it around. And looks like I mounted this up myself, but I thought I torqued this green rail onto the action uh, the way I normally have before with the right torque and everything, but it is a little loose. That is not from the ring to the rail, that is the rail to the receiver or the, um, the action. So a little update there. Let me just go ahead and tighten that up real quick. All right, and fast forward a little bit, and sure enough, all four of these screws here um, were loose. So I put that on myself. I don't know what I was smoking, but... Yeah, no good. I've done this kind of setup uh, plenty of times before and uh, never messed up that bad. So I just didn't torque it right, my bad. So we got the torque wrench set correctly this time. That's tightened up. So I owe this rifle a whole independent video. So look out for that. Like I said, a little bit of a different kind of video, just going back to back on all kinds of guns, but all of which uh, have zero to very little impressions with. So thought I'd just throw them all in one video. Now on my own, I'm already gonna go ahead and say that very soon I will make its own video on the 5.56 AK from PSA as well as the Bergara Premier Divide, 6.5 Creedmoor. But anyway, a little bit of a different kind of video. Hope you guys enjoyed it nonetheless. That does it. See you guys next time.